In addition to changing the size, we also want to save it for web. Save for web is going to compress it um, to make it even smaller. So again, you wouldn't want to do this if you were um, wanting to print it, but when you're doing it for web, um, we want to compress it down. So click Save for Web. Let me see if I can't make this a little smaller. Can move this up so it's on the screen. Okay. So it automatically defaults normally to four up view, which shows you four different versions of your photo. But you can also look at the two up, the optimized, and the original. I'm going to go ahead and work in the four up view. So you'll notice that the first um, photo in the top left corner, it says original, and it says 163K. Now, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the file size, which is in kilobytes right now, that 163K. We're trying to get that number as low as possible um, without having the quality of the picture look bad. So if we are um, adjusting this this option right here, and basically this is just a little comparison, so you can try different options and choose the best one. Um, you can tell that we're going to be modifying this one because it's highlighted um, with the blue box, but either way you can click on whatever square you want to work with. We're going to work with this one. We're going to compare it to the original photo right here next to it. Um, it's right now it's 5.76 Ks and the quality is set at 40. That's actually pretty decent. It doesn't really look like it's lost too much. Um, but here we can play around and we can choose low, which then makes the quality 10. You can see it looks really kind of uh, fuzzy around here and kind of pixely. So we don't want that. I think that's too low. Medium, however, looks better, but it still looks a little fuzzy. And if you're not sure, you can um, go over here and click the zoom. And you can zoom in a little bit. But no matter what, it's going to look a little pixely if you're zoomed in over 100%. Um, to zoom back out, you have to push the option key and while you click. But OK, so medium doesn't look too bad. Let's see what high looks like. High looks even better, but it's 9.34 Ks, which really we want to get it under 10, but as low as possible. So 9 could be OK, but for the, the size of this photo, it would be nice if we could get it even smaller. If you look here, it's telling us, um, I didn't mean to do that. If you look here, it's telling us it's going to take four seconds um, at a 28.8 kbps connection. So four seconds, I don't really want it to take four seconds. But again, that's also, you know, not the fastest connection. But if we make it medium, all of a sudden it jumps down a whole second. It makes the size quite a bit smaller, like half the size practically. It doesn't look that much different. Um, you can also go in and tweak more. So high is going to make the quality 60, medium 30. Um, you can you know try the different things. But we can go into medium. Maybe we just want to pump it up a little bit, but not all the way to the next setting. We can do that too. Um, optimized is going to kind of make it a little bit faster. When you choose progressive, progressive adds a little bit of file size to it, and progressive is going to um, make it so the photo kind of downloads and starts to show um, as it's downloading, where if you don't have progressive, um, it's going to just all show up at one time. I think it's fine to have it all show up at one time so you're not adding the the extra file size, um, especially when you're making it small enough that it should come in pretty quickly. Um, if you had a larger photo, you might want to try to do progressive so people knew something was coming um, and they weren't waiting a long time 
and think that it was just a blank area. But I think this is a pretty good setting that we have here, but you know, we can also use these other quadrants to compare. So this one, for example, is set on low already. This one, um, very high. So we can kind of see here the difference in quality. And then we can also look and compare um, the quality that we have it at um, versus how it looks versus the time it says it's going to take to download. And I think the one that we did here, I'm going to switch this back to the hand because it's driving me crazy. Um, I think the one we have here is good, so I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this with a different name and call it just two. It's fine, I guess. So that's how you save for web. And then also in these save for web options, you can choose from JPEG, GIF, and ping. Um, there's two types of pings. Now, when you're doing photos, you're almost always going to choose JPEG. Um, JPEG is the best format for photos. Um, if you're doing some other type of graphics, you might want to use a GIF. Um, a GIF is only going to um, use 256 colors to create the image. So you can tell if we do GIF, um, it makes it so that it's not clear and it's kind of splotchy. And on top of that, it made it, the file size a whole lot bigger. You can see that if we do that down here. And we can compare them. But anyway, just rule of thumb, always use JPEG for photos. And um, I'll just cancel that because we already saved for web, but basically that's what you need to do to save for web and to optimize your photos so that they um, download quickly onto the web page.